An Eastern Kentucky woman faces murder charges in the death of her newborn child. A Logan County man is dead following a house fire and the first tenant of the Kentucky Enterprise Industrial Park is named. And it all happened this week. Welcome everyone to This Week. I'm Sean Allen. For the next half hour, we'll catch you up on news you may have missed and give you updates on the week that was in your hometown. We begin with a story that shocked the region this week. A Johnson County woman is charged with murdering her newborn infant. 34-year-old Amanda Mead of West Van Leer was indicted last week on murder charges after delivering the baby at her home and that it later died. West Van Leer Fire Chief and Johnson County Deputy Coroner Bill Robinson responded to the call for help. He said she delivered the baby by herself in her home, which had no electricity or running water, then cut the umbilical cord with scissors. The state medical examiner's office found she did not clamp the cord properly afterwards and the infant child died of blood loss. Robinson says Meade called 911 about an hour after the child was born. Meade is charged with murder a Class A felony, punishable by 20 to 50 years in prison. She's currently being held at the Big Sandy Regional Detention Center. She's also facing numerous drug charges not related to the indictment. Family members of a man who was murdered in a 2013 returned to the Floyd County Courthouse Thursday hoping for closure as the two responsible in his murder were set to be sentenced. I spoke with the family who say they did not get the closure they were looking for. In July, Ronald and Loretta Wright pleaded guilty to charges in the 2013 murder of Famer Halbert. With Ronald pleading guilty to murder, wanton endangerment, and assault, and Loretta pleading guilty to facilitation of murder. Today was sentencing day for the pair, but as Ronald Wright appeared before Judge Thomas Smith, he requested that his attorney, Jerry Patton, be relieved of his duties and that he be allowed to rescind his guilty plea. As a result, a hearing is now set for November 22nd to allow his new attorney, who is yet to be named, present evidence of why Ronald Wright should be allowed to rescind his guilty plea. Loretta Wright was sentenced to 15 years with five of those years to be probated. She was instructed to turn herself in to the Floyd County Jail at 10 a.m. Monday morning. Family members of Famer Halbert say they were not able to get the closure they needed today. We came today, thought we was going to get a little justice, you know. I brought the boys to us so they could be secure that they're going to prison, but it didn't happen today. No matter what they get, I'm not going to get enough justice. They're not going to bring my husband back, and, and they damaged these seven babies' lives for, you know, the rest of their life. And Halbert's grandson, who was only six at the time of the murder, remembers very vividly the events that took place that night. They came uh, to our house. At first they were talking to a, a mammal like it was all normal. Didn't want to ask to go to the bathroom. But instead of going to the bathroom, I noticed that he would, that he walked right past the bathroom. So I followed him. And as soon as I stepped on the wall bit that was poking out, and he grabbed the drive sheet off of the uh, counter, and he put it in my mouth and held me back. And then he held me about six inches away from my grandpa. and made me watch him and shoot him in the forehead. If Ronald Wright's original plea agreement is upheld, he will serve 25 years in prison. Reporting from Prestonsburg, I'm Sean Allen for EKB News. Three men from Ohio are in jail accused of burglarizing a home Wednesday in Martin County. Deputies responded to the burglary call on Sweetwater Branch after a homeowner discovered his home had been broken into and vandalized. Just a little while later, another call sent deputies to a different residence where the suspects were hiding. We got a tip of uh, where these men may be. We already had them as suspects. Uh, we got a tip where they may be, and we uh, knew that one of them had a warrant, outstanding warrant on him, and uh, we went to a location on Collins Creek just out of Warfield and uh, made contact with the three of them. Uh, the one with the warrant was actually hiding in the attic uh, we recovered the uh, stolen firearm, which was a 9mm high point. Uh, it was recovered in the home there where they were at. Uh, and we recovered the uh, Nintendo 64 at a location uh, where they had taken it and sold it or traded it. 
arrested were 31-year-old Mark Crouch, 25-year-old Jonathan Hall, and 28-year-old Gerald Harden. All three were charged with second-degree burglary, third-degree criminal mischief, and possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Crouch was also charged with resisting arrest. They were all lodged in the Big Sandy Regional Detention Center. A house fire last weekend in Logan County is being blamed for a man's death. The fire broke out around 1 a.m. Sunday morning on Godby Street. Fire crews were on the scene within two minutes of the 911 call and were able to knock down the fire in less than 10 minutes. But once they were able to get inside, they found the body of a man in his 40s in the kitchen area where the fire started. Firefighters attempted to revive the man who was later pronounced dead at Logan Regional Medical Center. Investigators say the fire appears accidental and it may have been an unattended cooking fire, but the investigation continues. A West Virginia coal miner is killed, marking the seventh mining death this year in the state. The incident happened at Marfork Coal Company's Horse Creek Eagle Deep Mine in Raleigh County. The body of 49-year-old James Ray Atkins was found in a raw coal stockpile at the mine's processing plant. Officials with the West Virginia Office of Miners Health, Safety and Training did not say how he had been killed. One local family is hoping to inspire healing after experiencing a horrible tragedy. EKB's Shannon Deskins tells us all about the Coal Initiative and its mission of suicide prevention. Sunday night, more than a hundred lanterns lit the sky above Prestonsburg in memory of 19-year-old Cole Oosley. He was so bright. He graduated with honors. He was fluent in Spanish. He was teaching himself German and Mandarin. He wanted to be a neurologist. He was already a front-end manager at Food City at 19 years old. He was the perfect child. But Cole didn't see himself that way. Nearly two weeks ago, Cole Oosley committed suicide, leaving his mother a heartbreaking 30-page letter explaining why. And he was so tired of being imperfect in this world that he really just prayed to be able to go to heaven. And that's where the hashtag perfect enough was born because he really wanted to be perfect but he already was. He just didn't, couldn't accept the fact that he wasn't perfect enough for himself. In lieu of flowers, Andrea, along with her family and friends, encouraged everyone to donate to a GoFundMe page in memory of Cole. But when they tried to decide where to send the money, they hit a wall. And when there wasn't right off anything local that we knew of to donate to, and she said, we'll make something. And the Cole Initiative was born, as well as the first steps towards starting a nonprofit organization aimed at suicide prevention in our region. I'm not going to just take for granted that, that this is what I want to do and so this is where the money needs to be spent. I'm going to ask people, what can I do? How can I reach you? There has also been an acronym created with Cole's name with some reminders for all parents, encouraging better communication with their children. Just, we shouldn't ignore it. It shouldn't be a taboo to consider that your child could be the one. Because if my child could be the one, anybody else's child could be the one. For more information, check out the Cole Initiative Suicide Prevention page on Facebook. In Prestonsburg, I'm Shannon Deskins for EKB News. Coming up, there will soon be a new documentary general on details of this week's unexpected announcement of the position. Coming up next. Arteries are the body's highway. It's the job of a vascular surgeon to keep them free and clear. Pikeville Medical Center's vascular surgeons, Dr. Al Adasi and Dr. Nancy Clark, provide comprehensive treatment for circulatory disorders, specializing in limb salvage, aortic disease, carotid artery disease, dialysis, and varicose veins. Find out if you are a candidate for vascular screenings. Call 606-218-2202. Pikeville Medical Center, Mayo Clinic Care Network member. 
insurance, there's a new innovative way to keep your home virtually spotless. It's called Forward Pay from Appalachian Wireless. Unlimited text, talk, and three gigs of data for just $44.99, which you only pay month to month. If, of course, little Timmy finishes cleaning his room and doing the dishes by 6 p.m., Forward Pay even works on hand me down phones. Yeah. See store for details. Better service, bigger savings. That's today's Appalachian Wireless and East Kentucky Network Company. Hey, Daybreakers, Carolina and Ted here. <laughs> Ted is uh, losing Hi, his voice. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> <clears throat> it's fine. Hey, listen, Monday's going to roll around with a new edition of Daybreak. We've got $225 up for grabs. We do, and only 50 balls in the hopper. That's right. And all you got to do is play the daily games, and uh, you got a shot at winning. It's super simple. Make sure you tune in. We'll be right here on Daybreak Morning Show from 6 to 9 a.m. We've also got some Halloween prizes up our sleeve, so don't miss out. We'll be right here on 93.1 WDHR, EKBTV and... EKBTV.com. See you Monday. I used to think news is news. It's all the same, but it's not. There's a big difference between local broadcast news and cable news. See, local stations are part of my community, connecting me to local news, weather, and sports on every device. It makes sense. Get the news from the people I trust who actually live here. No agenda, no bias like on cable shout shows or social media, just facts. For news I can trust, I stay local. Support your local stations. Text TV to 52886 today. Pikeville officially welcomed the first tenant of the Kentucky Enterprise Industrial Park Friday and the city also received a grant that may make it just a little easier to attract more business into the park. EKB's Chris Anderson tells us more. The city of Pikeville officially welcomed Silverliner truck manufacturers as the very first tenant of the Kentucky Enterprise Industrial Park. The city broke ground on a speculative building back in the summer, and even before the first bit of dirt has been turned on the construction of the building, Silverliner has committed to populating it. The company will manufacture tanker trucks for a variety of uses. Silverliner CEO Chris Tomlinson, a Floyd County native, said he's excited to bring his business back home. I am committed to not only making Silverliner a success, but also committed to assisting in the future growth and development of Pipeful in Eastern Kentucky with a percentage of the profits from Silver Liner to be paid back to the city of Pikeville for economic growth without would you like to challenge any and all companies that come here, please do the same. The faith that the city and our local government and our Congressman Rogers has put into me is absolutely overwhelming. And I couldn't imagine being anywhere else in the world other than right here in my home in Eastern Kentucky. Silverliner is expected to bring approximately 50 jobs initially and up to 300 jobs within five years. Congressman Hal Rogers praised the efforts to bring a tenant like Silverliner to the industrial park. You're fun to work with because you, you, you see a project and you go after it and you zero in on it as a team, a community-wide, area-wide, federal, state, local team, and you make it happen. And that's what I like to see and that's the kind of people I like to work with. Rogers previously helped secure abandoned mine lands funds for economic development projects, projects like the Kentucky Enterprise Industrial Park. He said he hopes Pikeville will become a model for what those funds can do. So I want to see more like this. We've got another 30 million coming to Kentucky next year of those types of grants uh, whose money will be used to do things like this throughout eastern Kentucky. Also at the ceremony, Kentucky Power presented the city with a ceremonial check for an economic development grant that will be used for geotechnical work at the industrial park. Pikeville City Manager Philip Ellswick said the grant funds will be used to aid in construction at the park and could make it easier to recruit businesses to the site. If you build a building just on the ground as it is, you could have differential settlement or things of that nature. So this testing is important to tell you what you need to do to your foundation to protect your building. Ellswick said the city has several prospective candidates for who could be the next tenant at the Kentucky Enterprise Industrial Park. In Pikeville, Chris Anderson, EKB News. In July, the Floyd County Fiscal Court was able to free the county of a $2.2 million bond owned for Thunder Ridge Raceway. At the time, Judge Executive Ben Hale told EKB News that with the bond being paid off, he and the Fiscal Court would be able to focus on doing other things for the people of the county. That promise came to fruition this week as Judge Hale obtained a $2 million bond that would pay for numerous projects. I can always remember Paul Patton saying, most important thing 
to a, a voter. The most important road to them is not the road that's worried about 23 or 460 or anything. It's the road that goes in front of their house. Well, I want to get rid of the debt service that was hanging over the county so we can then get a bond that then we can put back to the people of the county. And how do you do that? You get rid of the debt and then make sure the bonds that we do go back to the people. But you can't do that if you don't get rid of the debt service that was hanging over Floyd County for so many years. Judge Hale estimates the new bond could be repaid within 10 years. Pike County Jailer Freddie Lewis unexpectedly tendered his resignation this week. EKB's Chris Anderson sat down with him Thursday, and Lewis says he may be stepping away for now, but he plans for it to be a short break. Pike County Jailer Freddie Lewis said it's time to step down. This is not an overnight decision whatsoever. Lewis tendered his resignation Wednesday and will step down effective November 1st. He's currently just shy of three years in his first term, but he told EKB News that health issues and other opportunities made it necessary to step away. It's just a lot of pressure and a lot of stress. Uh, I've had a little bit of health issue uh, about um, two months ago, uh, landing me in the hospital for a few days. And, you know, I've really just gave it a lot of thought. And I think it right now, at this point in time, uh, it's a good opportunity to uh, try to uh, maybe step out, step away from the, from the pressures of the game, uh, from the stress of the job, and, and try to focus on, you know, uh, health for one. And uh, then looking at other things, you know, as far as uh, where we can go to get back into, you know, helping people and working for the public. I enjoy that. I really do. Lewis said he's proud of the work he and his staff has done since being elected. And most of all, he'll miss the people. You know, I'm really going to miss the people of Pike County. Um, I love, you know, working with them. I love serving the people, um, the children here in the county. Um, those are the things that I'm really going to miss a lot. I mean, just like uh, going out to the schools, talking to the children about drug education, working out of Frankfurt to try to get help. Probably 96% of our inmates here, they may have robbed a bank, they may have stolen a car, but it's the root cause is drug addiction. And, you know, when you're dealing with these people, these people has to have hope. Our business is to try to send a better woman or man out of this jail than they was when they showed up. Pike Deputy Judge Executive Brian Morris has been appointed as Pike County's new jailer to fill out the rest of Lewis's term. Lewis left the door open for future public service, so it's likely that Pike County has not heard the last of its current jailer. Just because we're taking a break here don't mean that, you know, hey, we're going off somewhere dying. I don't have to have a title to help people. <laughs> I mean, you know, if it takes a title to help someone, then we're in bad shape. I don't have to be the jailer to help you. From the Pike County Detention Center, Chris Anderson, EKB News. Coming up, Chief Meteorologist Lakeland Hopkins will begin with the perfect weather and Andrew Jordan will begin with the fact that we can sport. Coming up next on this week. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month and Pikeville Medical Center encourages every woman over the age of 40 or with elevated risk for breast cancer to schedule your annual mammogram today. Perform breast exams at home and catch breast cancer early with screenings. Early detection is the best treatment. Save your life. Get a mammogram. To schedule an appointment at the Leonard Lawson Cancer Center, call 606-218-2212. Pikeville Medical Center, proud member of the Mayo Clinic Care Network. Chief Meteorologist Lathan Hopkins. For the clearest, most up-to-date look at your weather, it's the EKB Weather Cam, brought to you by American Heating and Cooling. We give you a bird's eye view of the skies above Pikeville, rain or shine, day or night. Watch for the EKB Weather Cam every day at 6 and 10, brought to you by American Heating and Cooling. 
It's the high school football game of the week, presented by Paul Howard Jr., attorney at law, and the Golden Corral Restaurant in Pikeville. This week, a showdown of two state champions. The Johnson Central Golden Eagles travel to Belfry to take on the Pirates. The game of the week airs Saturday at 7 and Sunday at 4 and 8.30, only on EKB-TV. Welcome back to This Week on EKB TV. I'm Chief Meteorologist Lathan Hopkins with a look back at your weather this past week. And it's been a roller coaster ride. We started with plenty of rain showers on Monday, picking up in some cases an inch and a half to two inches plus of rain in a matter of 24 hours. Temperatures still managed to top out in the mid to upper 60s. Of course, with that system, Temperatures cooled down on Tuesday, down to 60 degrees, but also notice the overnight lows. Should be around 45 this time of the year. We drop down into the 30s Wednesday morning. Widespread frost across the area on Thursday. High, the overnight low, I should say, Thursday morning in Jackson, 34 degrees, but a couple of valley locations woke up on Thursday with temperatures in the upper 20s, as a matter of fact. Then for Friday, the temperature jumped to 71 pleasant degrees after an overnight low of 48. A couple of dry days, but of course that is all changing this weekend with rain showers, maybe even mixed with some snow at times during the overnight hours Saturday night into Sunday night. Not expecting anything in the way of accumulation or anything like that, but what you will notice is the colder air this weekend, and by Monday morning we could be talking about the first freeze and the season ending for growing across the region Monday morning. Of course, we'll keep you posted. Now let's talk about sports and head over to Andrew Joyce. What we saw in sports this week, the 15th region KHSAA cheerleading competition descended on the East Kentucky Expo Center. Our own Shelby Porter was there and files this report. The 2017 KHSAA 15th Region Competitive Cheerleading Championship was held last night at the East Kentucky Expo Center in Pikeville. Ten high school squads from the 15th Region competed for a chance to advance to the State Cheerleading Championship at the Alltech Arena at Kentucky Horse Park in Lexington. In the small division, Pikeville High School brought home first place. Prestonsburg High School advances in the medium division. In the large division, Sheldon Clark High School brought home the gold. And Shelby Valley High School moves forward in the super large division. The winners will compete at the state level Saturday, December 9th in Lexington. In Pikeville, Shelby Porter, EKB Sports. Also this week, the final showdown in the 15th Region Volleyball Tournament Championship Night the two winningest teams in the region, each with 30 plus wins. Hey, there's still one more. There's still one more. All right, one more. Hey, tomorrow night, everything we got, everything in the tennis. Let's go, baby. That's 58th district champion Floyd Central, whose only loss in the region was to Betsy Lane. And the 57th district champion, the Paintsville Lady Tigers, who avenged their only regional losses of the season in the semifinal win over Pikeville. This would be the first meeting between the two this season and the title match lived up to its billing. After Floyd Central jumped out with the win in the first set 25-16, Paintsville rallied 25-11, Floyd Central then 25-21 in the third, and then Paintsville's Lady Tigers win the final two sets 25-22 and 15-8. The Paintsville Lady Tigers 15th region volleyball champions with a 3-2 win they move on to the Volleyball State Tournament next Friday. And also this week, girls and boys high school soccer state tournament action. A Kentucky boys soccer semi seven state match. Pikeville and Corbin battled at the Bob Amos Soccer Complex. That game tied at one going into the second half. The two teams back and forth looking for the go ahead goal. Cade Byers will break free, pushes the ball downfield, gets past a defender and he'll cross to Jose Childers, who takes the shot, but misses high. Corbin looking to go ahead. Jacob Johnson gets past the defender and takes the shot, and that is the goal. That would be the difference maker. Corbin comes out on top 
in boys semi-state action. They defeat Pikeville 2-1 and move on in state competition. It was a sweep for the 13th region champs as the Lady Red Hounds scored the winning goal with just over three minutes to go in semi-state seven action at Stonecrest. And Corbin defeats the Prestonsburg Lady Black Cats 2-1 and advance. That's a look at what happened this week in sports. Stay tuned, we've got a lot more coming up. Arteries are the body's highway. It's our job to keep them free and clear. Pikeville Medical Center's vascular surgeons, Dr. Al Adasi and Dr. Nancy Clark, provide comprehensive treatment for circulatory disorders, specializing in limb salvage, aortic disease, carotid artery disease, dialysis, and varicose veins. Find out if you are a candidate for vascular screenings. Call 606-218-2202. Pikeville Medical Center, Mayo Clinic Care Network member. Golden Corral now opens at 9.30 a.m. for seven-day brunch. Maybe you showed up for the strawberry cheesecake French toast or made-to-order omelets or delicious carved ham. Is that a mashed potato volcano? Nice. We have over 150 choices, but the only one that matters is yours. Golden Corral, your choice rule. Z1075, the new hit music revolution. Today's most massive hits from the world's biggest stars. Start your day with the Kid Craddock Morning Show, weekday mornings from 6 to 11. And end it with the Zach Sang Show every weekday evening from 7 to midnight. Here on Z1075. Tell them sit down. It goes without saying that Americans owe much to the veterans who serve this country. Thursday, one group offered a small thank you. EKB's Shelby Porter was there. Hundreds joined together today in Floyd County for the fourth annual Veterans Appreciation Lunch hosted by Appalachian Hospice Care at the Prestonsburg National Guard Armory. Appalachian Hospice Care provides care to many veterans who are at the end of their life, but we decided to do something to honor our veterans during their lifetime. Lunch and dessert were provided to all who participated. Every veteran takes an official photograph that is given to them at a later date. Door prizes were also given out to most of those in attendance. Over 100 volunteers helped make the event possible for veterans in the Big Sandy area. We serve the veterans. No veteran or their guest stands in line. We actually serve them and we believe that's another way to honor them. It's really heartwarming to see that they come back year after year. Many veterans attend the luncheon every year and most of them say this event is one of the only reasons they get out of their house. I don't have to tell you what this is. Just turn around and look at you. Look at all these vets. They're not asking for nothing. Appalachian Hospice Care serves those in Pike, Floyd, Johnson, Martin, and McGoffin counties. Volunteers are always welcome. In Prestonsburg, Shelby Porter, EKB News. Sometimes you need more advanced care, and it's good to know you can get it right here at home. It can be scary to hear that your doctor or local hospital needs to transfer you somewhere else. So if that happens, ask about Pikeville Medical Center first. With a team of board-certified doctors and membership in the Mayo Clinic Care Network, Pikeville Medical Center offers a higher level of care right here at home. Pikeville Medical Center, the specialists are here. Parents, there's a new innovative way to keep your home virtually spotless. It's called Forward Pay from Appalachian Wireless. Unlimited text, talk, and three gigs of data for just $44.99, which you only pay month to month. If, of course, little Timmy finishes cleaning his room and doing the dishes by 6 p.m., Forward Pay even works on hand me down phones. Yeah. See store for details. Better service, bigger savings. That's today's Appalachian Wireless and East Kentucky Network Company. I hope you enjoyed our look back at some of the stories that made headlines this week. Be sure to tune in next weekend at 6.30 p.m. right here on EKB-TV. For this week, I'm Sean Allen. Have a great weekend.